All right, so hey guys, it's Maddie. I'm sexy. I'm in a two-piece green set because apparently I'm obsessed with the color green now. And I am still recording using this podcast mic because it is the mic I have right now. I'll probably invest in a lav mic at some point. But for now, I'm going to continue holding this fucking dildo microphone. So today I wanted to do a video on how to feel more comfortable communicating what you like and what you need in the bedroom, whether that's physically in regards to your pleasure and what feels good or what you need emotionally to go forth and be fucked. All the things that go through my head, things that I need before, during, and after sex in order to feel good and feel comfortable communicating what I need, um, and just sort of what I've learned in the process. Before I really dive into things here, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is of course our friends over at Beducated. I'm gonna get deeper into Beducated and how they connect to today's video later on, but if you're new here, if you've somehow never heard of Beducated, they are number one the loves of my life. And number two, they're an online course platform with audio, video, and written guides, all with the aim of enhancing your love and sex life. Educated is my absolute favorite platform for all things sex education. People of all ages and experience levels can benefit from being on a platform like Beducated. So thank you to Beducated for sponsoring today's video and I'll get more into them later on. So to kick this off, I wanna start by talking about probably the number one thing that you should be communicating about beforehand in order to feel good about the sex after it happens. And that is STDs, baby. Let's talk about it. There are a lot of conversations you'll have to have when really learning how to speak up for yourself and your pleasure that can feel unsexy. And as a result, that can make them feel more difficult to have. And this is obviously one of them. There is no uh, like get out of jail free card with this one. There's no way around it. There's no way to avoid it. You have to be having this conversation. One, people don't talk about STDs as often as they should. And two, people don't get tested for STDs as often as they should. And these two things definitely play into each other. When it comes to having that conversation with people, I feel like sometimes people fear bringing it up because sometimes not knowing and not asking is easier than knowing uh, because you just want to have sex. So you're like, oh, whatever, it's probably not. And you just don't bring it up. Or two, and I think this is probably a more common reason for why someone wouldn't bring it up, is that you're worried how they'll respond to that question. And let me be so fucking clear here. The way that someone responds to you asking them when the last time they got tested was, will tell you whether or not you should be having sex with this person. They either give you an answer and you decide, great, sounds good, or no, I'm not comfortable having sex with you knowing that that's how long ago you've been tested, or they don't tell you. They say they've never been tested. Maybe they turn it into a joke or poke fun at you for asking them. The way that they respond to you asking when the last time they got tested was, is immediately gonna let you know, yes, I'd love to have sex with this person. They're mature, know how to communicate, and absolutely not, I will be running away from this person. Point blank, you should not have sex with someone who does not know or care about their own sexual health because more than likely, they will not give a fuck about yours. I feel like I usually get pretty fired up when talking about STDs and asking these types of questions because I had an STD in college. I got chlamydia in like 2018 or something. And it makes me really frustrated to look back at it because when I had sex for the first time and was about to have sex for the second time, I went to my mom and was like, can you help me get STD testing? I don't think I have an STD, but I know I should get tested in between every partner. And I have a great fucking mom, so she did exactly that. So right off the bat, even when I was an idiot teenager, I was the type of girl that was like, I'm gonna get tested after every single partner, not only because I care about myself, but because I care about my other partners too. And let me be super clear, despite being tested really frequently, at the time, it was still really difficult for me to bring up the conversation of STDs. So even if I was getting tested, I had a hard time checking with my partners to make sure they were good. It makes me really stressed out and sad to look back on because there were moments where I was too scared to speak up and like ask about STDs out of fear of, killing the mood, which is fucking stupid. And I'll talk more about that later. And there were other times where I did bring it up and I did ask and 
they acted like I was like putting a burden on them for asking them to go get tested. And now I can look back at it and be like, holy fuck. Like those people shouldn't be having sex. You shouldn't be having sex with them. If you ask someone when the last time they got tested was, they say they've never been tested and you ask them to go get tested and they act like you have just like put a massive burden on them because they wanted to get fucked that night. Like do not fuck around with people like that. That is so not okay. <laughs> Makes me really sad to look back on because my 18, 19 year old self really tried so hard to do the right thing and was like always very conscious and caring about my own sexual health and the people around me sexual health. And I was not offered the same respect and that sucks. Also, I just wanna make a note that access to free or low cost STD testing is gonna vary depending on where in the world that you live. Obviously my experience living in New York City in the States is gonna be different than people that live elsewhere. So I think the main point to note here is that even if you're not able to get tested for whatever reason, your partner deserves to know that. And you need to open up that conversation and be honest about the fact that you have not gotten tested and let your partner decide if that's something that they feel comfortable with. You cannot skip out on this conversation. You can't skip out on opening up that dialogue to share when the last time you were tested was and figure out when the last time your partner was tested was and figure out if you two are comfortable with how long that has been and in between how many partners that it was. You don't want an STD. <laughs> period, point blank. And if you go a long time without getting tested, having STDs untreated can cause longer term health complications. Like, oh, it just sucks so much that people do not get great sex education and people don't prioritize getting tested and knowing your status and see that as like a regular part of having sex. It sucks. I wish more people took it to heart. I wish more people got tested frequently, but I can't make a video about communicating in bed and not talk about STDs. This is the first and probably the most important thing that you're gonna need to talk about. And it can feel unsexy and a little awkward at times, but this is like a non-fucking negotiable. And let me emphasize that like the reason why getting tested frequently is so important and so great is because STDs are treatable. And if you're getting tested frequently and you're able to catch it, you're gonna be golden. You're gonna be great. <laughs> STDs can sound really scary, but the truth of the matter is that they're extremely common. They're extremely treatable. Pretty much fucking everyone will get an STD at some point in their lives. Literally all of us have HPV. So I'm just thinking about college Maddie right now who like just figured out she had chlamydia and had absolutely no one to talk to or turn to about it. Don't stress about it. You're gonna be okay. STDs are totally treatable. And the only thing that we can do is continue to get tested regularly, communicate with our partners about our testing status and when the last time we've been tested was and make it so that it's easier to be public and talk about because literally fucking everyone gets an STD at some point. It's sincerely not a big deal but you need to be getting tested frequently. You have to know where you're at and communicate that to your partners because honestly, it's just not fair not to. So the next thing I wanna talk about, which is something that I bring up in a lot of my videos, education, specifically sex education. I feel like I sound like a broken record at this point because I feel like I've brought this up in so many videos, but I think so much of being good at communicating in bed is just being confident in your own pleasure and what that looks like for you. And this is of course where our sponsor for today's video comes in, which is Beducated. Like I said earlier, Beducated is an online course platform with audio, video, and written guides focusing on enhancing your love and sex life. Beducated is the sex ed that everyone fucking deserves. I've been partnering with Beducated for months now, have taken a lot of their courses at this point, And one of the best parts, one of my favorite parts about all of their courses is that a lot of their courses are pretty heavy on video content, meaning, you are watching and getting literal visual examples of what it is that they're talking about and what you're learning about in every single course. I recently watched both of the courses that they have on oral sex and they were really interesting to watch. They both go through like seven or eight different techniques for giving oral. Maybe this is like a across the board sort of thing, but I feel like with oral specifically, 
people really are expected to perform at like Olympic grade levels right off the bat. And because there's such a pressure to perform perfectly, I think sometimes there is like a jump from like zero to 100. Sometimes I feel like people think that giving great oral means giving super intense oral. And that's not always the case. <laughs> and that's something that I felt was really highlighted by these courses. They really went into like all the different ways and techniques for pleasuring someone orally that's not necessarily the most extreme version. When in reality, good oral doesn't look like just deep throating for 10 minutes straight. Good oral doesn't look like someone just like full vacuuming your clip for 10 minutes. You need to build up to it. You need to switch up your techniques. You need to sort of make oral an all encompassing thing rather than being like, all right, let's go. And going to like the most intense option. <laughs> but I feel like that's a lot of people's go-tos with oral is just to like do the most intense, craziest thing you can think of because you want your partner to come. You want them to be wowed. When in reality, they could probably reach a better, more intense orgasm if you just went slower, changed up different techniques, and built up to that intensity in smaller doses. All of which I really felt was highlighted by these two oral courses on Beducated. These courses are great to watch on your own, just to sort of build up your own confidence in communicating what you like um, and asking what your partner might like. But also I think that these are great courses to watch with your partner to sort of open up a dialogue if that's something that you're comfortable with. And as always, I have a fantastic code for you guys to use. So if you're interested in trying out Beducated, you can use code Maddie for 70% off the yearly pass. Seriously, Beducated is one of my absolute favorite brands to work with. I really, really believe in what they're doing and the content they're creating. And I think that you guys are gonna love it too. So be sure to click the link in the description and check them out if you're interested in these goddamn courses. Looking back at a lot of the sexual relationships that I had in college specifically, um, sometimes there wasn't a lot of communication beforehand. <laughs> Communicating beforehand and sort of understanding what the dynamic is and what your boundaries are is gonna make communicating during the act of having sex a lot fucking easier and will probably set you up to have better sexual experiences than I did when I was in college. So let's get into this. What are you comfortable with happening? What are you not? What are your hard stops? I will not do that. And what are your must haves in order to proceed with hopefully being fucked halfway to death on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I'll tell you what mine are. These are my hard boundaries that I establish with myself and my partners before we start fucking. Number one, you're wearing a condom, period. No negotiation there. I do not want an STD. Condom stays on until you and I are in a committed fucking relationship and I decide I'm comfortable with that. That's not usually an issue. In most cases, the people that I've been with have automatically used a condom themselves as well. But I definitely was in situations in college where someone did not know me and tried to have sex with me and they tried to just go straight in balls to the wall without a fucking condom on. Hello? Unfortunately, a lot of young kids don't have great sex education resources or they end up getting getting their sex education from friends, siblings, cousins, who say things like, oh, I, I fucking never wear condoms. It doesn't feel as good on my dick. Yeah, condoms are so stupid, bro. She let me hit it raw. Like I'm so tired of hearing shit like that. It's not even fucking funny. And just as a general rule of thumb here, if you tell someone that you're planning on hooking up with that they need to use a condom and they do anything other than just say, awesome, and put one on, they probably have an STD. If they are protesting wearing a condom with you, they are protesting wearing a condom with other people. And like I said, that's how I got an STD. So my big piece of fucking advice, don't have sex with people that don't respect your boundaries. When you set a boundary, when you say, I need this in order to feel good, and someone tries to fight you on it, you run. You leave immediately. That person is not someone you want in your life. <laughs> Another example of a boundary that I set for myself is that I will not have penetrative sex with someone the first time that we have sex. If I am gonna have penetrative sex with someone, we're gonna work up to that. If I'm gonna have rough sex with someone, we're gonna work up to that. Those are moments in intimacy that for me feel like 
I need a little bit more emotional preparation in order to feel good doing something like that. And that boundary wasn't always there because I didn't know that's how I felt. And I learned that that boundary was there by crossing it a few times. <laughs> and sometimes boundaries look different from person to person, but getting clear on your boundaries beforehand, not only within yourself, but also vocalizing that to your partner is gonna make communicating during sex even easier because you already have the framework of like where we're going and where we're absolutely not going. I think a lot of communication in the bedroom gets swept under the rug out of fear of killing the mood, which I deeply understand because I can't tell you how many times my past self did not say what I wanted or what I needed because I felt like I had to be super sexy and really like build up the situation and it was gonna kill the mood if I said, yeah, we're not having penetrative sex. Yeah, you're not gonna fucking pull my hair and slap the shit out of me and spit in my mouth the first time we fuck. I get it. Misogyny has instilled this fear in a lot of us that if we are not constantly fulfilling the fantasy for our potential partners or our current partners, that they're not gonna like us as much. It's stupid, it's dumb. Present Maddie is telling you that it's fucked up. You do not have to worry about killing the mood with the right person. I said this in my last video in regards to like dating and wearing your heart on your sleeve with your emotions, but it applies here as well. You can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Communicating what your boundaries are and what's gonna feel good for you will not kill the mood with the right person, but it might kill the mood with the wrong person. And if you setting your boundaries kills the mood for someone, Thank God you set them and now will not be having sex with them. Communicating your boundaries and what is gonna feel good for you before and during sex is not killing the mood. And anyone that says that should be barred from having sexual contact with other people. It literally makes me so fucking mad. I can't even talk about this anymore. <laughs> Take some time to reflect on what your boundaries are. May that be just in general or person to person. If you're with someone right now, if you're thinking about being with someone right now, have a think on what your boundaries are and what good sex looks like to you. What do you need from your partners before, during, and after in order to feel good? Communicate that, set those boundaries because you deserve that and you deserve to have sex with someone who respects them. So obviously before you can communicate what you want and what feels good for you in bed, you sort of have to have an understanding of what that looks like on your own first. This is your sign to masturbate, baby. <laughs> it's just easier to ask for what you want and to communicate what's gonna feel good when you know what that looks like. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't. Like, it sucks how shamed masturbation is in a lot of communities. The amount of people that I get DMing me that have, you know, told me that they've never masturbated before, that they've never had an orgasm before, that they're nervous about it. The amount of not only DMs I've received, but people I have met in real life that have had sex but have never masturbated, you would be shocked. If you're a part of that population that has never masturbated before, never had an orgasm before, or you're having sex, but you've never masturbated. <sighs> I know I'm like the CEO of masturbation and they should just start fucking paying me, but goddamn, dude, you gotta try it. This shit's great. <laughs> I think focusing on self-pleasure and getting really clear on what that looks like to you and what your relationship with pleasure when it's just yourself involved, getting clear on what that looks like, that's like the first step to uncovering and talking about what good sex looks like to you. Let's understand pleasure first, and then we can talk about the dynamic between you and your partner and how that plays out. So anyways, this is a pro masturbation account. Half of the comments I read on a daily basis are people being like, I will pray for this woman. I will pray for this woman and her sins. Women should not be masturbating. Listen, babe, I jack the jimmies for a living. You are barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Like it is kind of funny, the idea of like some stranger sitting at a computer, like just typing away an essay on why I should stop masturbating. The CEO of marketing at Masturbation Central, like. <laughs> it feels like that's a really steep hill to sort of climb, you know? Like I've been masturbating for like 15 years, bro. There's no saving me. I'm too far gone. I've been recruited 
by big masturbation. So I don't know what you think you're accomplishing by writing that you're gonna pray for me that I need to stop masturbating in my comments. Like if I could grow a third hand to masturbate more, I would. Let's talk about giving feedback. Good sex means communicative sex. That's like the thesis statement of this whole fucking video. So with every partner and in every interaction, you're gonna need to be communicating how you feel, what you like, what you don't like, and giving your partner feedback. This can feel difficult, especially if you've had a partner in the past that did not take feedback well and maybe reacted sort of explosively to the idea that they have some things that they could improve on sexually. It really fucking sucks having experiences with partners that do not handle feedback well, because then it does become anxiety inducing to give feedback to other partners and you end up deprioritizing your own pleasure out of fear that your partner is gonna fucking act up. Oh, the right person is gonna love that you're giving feedback. I love when I'm given feedback. It's fucking amazing to have sex with someone who's like an active participant in wanting to better the relationship, in wanting to achieve better sex and better orgasms for the both of you. If you want me to do something differently, if you want me to try something else, please fucking tell me because I want to make my partners feel good. I want my partners to orgasm. I want them to feel good. I want them to enjoy the experience and your partner should want that for you too. Getting and giving feedback during sex to me is just fucking sexy. It means that we're both engaged in being with each other and really give a shit about each other's pleasure. And when we're not giving feedback about what feels good and what doesn't, we are sacrificing our own pleasure just to avoid having a tough conversation. And honestly, in turn, you end up in a situation where one or two or the both of you feels less valued by your partner. A hundred percent of my best partners that I've had in sex were the partners that were constantly asking me, how does this feel? Does this feel good? What do you want me to do to you? What do you want me to try? And I would ask those same questions in return. Opening those kinds of conversations, that's how you have good sex. And listen, I know that we love to make jokes about partners not being able to find the clit. And they're funny. They are funny sometimes. I think they're funny when you do communicate and they just don't listen. But if you're making jokes about partners not being able to find your clit, but then you never try to help them out or guide them and communicate what's gonna feel better for you, then like the joke is not funny anymore. You know, I think it just sucks that so much of like our culture around sex expects people to know what to do right off the bat. You expect women to like be fucking blowjob Olympians. <laughs> There's this culture of like, you should already know that. There's this pressure to perform past what you even know how to do because it wouldn't be hot or sexy if we all admitted that sex is uh, constantly a learning process. But let me be specific. It's a pressure to be a blowjob Olympian while also maintaining the guise of like, I'm a virgin. You gotta have the innocence, but you're somehow like the most naturally sexually fucking fluent person ever without ever touching a dick before. It makes no fucking sense, but that's the fantasy, right? Ah, I hate it. Different partners are gonna like different things. What feels good for different partners is gonna look completely different. Our bodies are all so fucking different. And if we all go into sexual interactions expecting our partners to be the best and also expecting ourselves to be the best, like you're just never gonna have good sex. <laughs> and wouldn't it be so much fucking easier and more peaceful and honestly sexier to hold your partners and yourself to a lower standard where you can just fucking relax and get to know each other without being expected to perform at fucking porn star levels like you fuck professionally come on <laughs> and like i said giving feedback can be as little as just telling someone to speed up or slow down move two steps to the right move two steps to the left and it doesn't always have to be feedback in the sense of like change up what you're doing. It can be feedback in the sense of like, oh, I fucking loved that. 
keep doing that. Communicating during sex, giving feedback on what's working and what doesn't is what makes sex good. In conclusion, getting better at communicating in bed is a whole lot of getting clear with yourself on what you like and what feels good for you. Even rehearsing how you would make those things clear to a partner before having the conversation with them if that's gonna make you more comfortable. And then just putting yourself out there, setting those boundaries, and having the hard conversation. Like I mentioned earlier and in my previous video, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. The right partner for you is gonna love how communicative and dedicated to your guys' joint pleasure you are. I just want you guys to know that whatever your boundaries are, whatever they look like, you deserve a partner who respects them, who prioritizes them, and who communicates their own boundaries to you as well. In conclusion, baby, I am manifesting all of your partners are communicative and prioritize the shit out of your pleasure. I hope you get fucked every damn day if you want to. I hope your sex lives look exactly the way you want them to look like and you have a partner who just blows your fucking mind on a daily basis. I want that for you. I want that for me too. I want that for all of us. <laughs> I just wanted to drop in before I leave to remind you guys to go check out the courses over on Vegucated. You will not be disappointed and I have a fucking killer code. You can get 70% off the yearly pass at Vegucated when you use code Maddie. So. Be sure to click the link in the description and go check them out. So anyways, that's the video. You can follow me on Instagram because I'm super sexy and I just deserve that. I hope you get fucked soon. Subscribe, like this video. Uh, I love you guys so much. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Bye.